Well, joining our costume designers panel now is Hope Hannafin for The Right Stuff on Disney Plus, produced by Nat Geo. Um, I'm Marcus James Dixon, senior editor at Gold Derby. And uh, first question, Hope, this project is based on an Oscar-winning film and a book by Tom Wolfe. Uh, did you go back to those other earlier projects just to kind of, you know, sink your teeth into them before you started this project? Oh, I did. I reread the novel, which I'd read when it came out um, for my interview. And then I also read every single one of the astronauts had written a biography or mm. had written about them. It was a little bit like the gospels because the same events were all there, but told from different perspectives, depending on who was doing the writing. So there was a, a very tall um, reading list. Um, and of course, Tom Wolfe's observations were invaluable. Um, well, let's start with the, the space suits. They are mm -hmm. very, very striking to look at. And I, I'm curious how um, close they are to the originals. Because I, I think the originals had the orange interiors just like your version does, right? They do. The orange interiors so you can see them in the water when they land and rescue. Mm. It's actually a NASA design feature. Um, we had them built here in Los Angeles. Um, they're to the T accurate unless you took them up to space and then you would die. They don't work that way, but they're museum quality replicas of it. They're awkward um, to wear and to get into, but I must say every one of the guys who put them on, just their faces lit up. They sent photos to their children, to their childhood friends. They kind of transformed as soon as they got into that. I've never seen actors put on something so uncomfortable and be so happy. It was kind of <laughs> a tree. You think of little girls putting on princess costumes or something and, and loving it, but this was a, a childhood fantasy for a lot of these guys. So it was really fun to watch that happen. I really hope they go in a museum or something because I mean, what now that the show's done filming, are they just gonna go in a warehouse and no one's ever gonna look at them? Well, well it depends on whether we have a season two or not because uh, the, yeah. first three, um, the first three guys went up in the same suits. Um, and a lot of the show focuses on the characters in their personal lives when they're not in those mm -hmm. iconic suits. Um, what were some of the big challenges you had with finding kind of the everyday wear from the 1960s? Well, it's interesting because everyday wear in some ways is the hardest to find. People preserve their wedding dresses and their prom dresses and dress uniforms. But when it comes down to wear and tear, an apron or you know um, little boys clothes which all get nicked and scraped over time it's harder to come from we use 44 different sources around the country um, some of them required me climbing into bins um, another was going to an abandoned warehouse um, and then we have wonderful rental houses here we use ebay and etsy and we made very little of it um, our casting came late and my colleagues know how that is, that it's hard to um, able to do things ahead when you're fitting people the morning that they work. Um, we were very conscious of creating a closet for the characters. So you saw them repeat clothes often. They, these guys only made seven grand a year and then lost their flight time pay once they were in mm. the program. So, and they were all modest, Midwestern, small town, guys um one of the challenges was trying to tell them apart and because mm -hmm. they were by necessity the same height the same weight the same haircut all white so um one of the ways we addressed that was to really concentrate on the families and show the difference there and there was quite a difference in how the wives were raised and what they brought to the table so um we actually made very little of it but altered a lot Mm. How many costumes would you say were in the entire uh, program? We hit about 9,000, but, <laughs> wow. but you don't ever really get the sense of that scope in the way it was finally presented. You know, we all, you lose scenes or you don't get the panorama shot and stuff. So mm -hmm. a lot of what we do, I think, is to create the world on set which is helpful to the actors and gives the DP the latitude to move the camera around, but you don't 
often see all that any of us do. Hmm. When you're in the NASA control room and everyone's kind of wearing the white, mm -hmm. um, how do you as a costume designer approach that? Do you, do you try to make at least one of them stand out differently or do you just make them all kind of similar? Well, we left the background all be similar and they really did all wear white shirts for the launch. Yeah. Um, we studied very carefully who put their tie bar where. I mean, it's, um, we have pictures of most of these guys and tried to let the, the, the background actors just be kind of a wash and fade away so we could bring more attention to our principles. Um, but that is a challenge when you have everyone looking alike. But then that becomes the character too, right? That yeah. visually you saw this group working together, giving up their individual identities and ambitions in a way to create this great project and work together. So like a uniform in the military, it has that same, or nuns in a habit, you know, it has that same sensibility of letting go of your individuality so you can push together as a team. So I really didn't mind that they all looked alike. I don't know. If I how loved it was hard for the audience to track, but yeah. I loved the, the army uniform. I think it was Alan Shepard's father, Frederick Lane, when he came to, <laughs> yeah. to dinner. Where, where did that come from? We were with Eastern Boston um, to do all the military uniforms and we had knew who these folks were and looked up their battle records and their military records. So everything down to every ribbon was accurate for them. Wow. And then we tailored his with an inch of his life because he didn't have to wear his uniform. He was essentially retired, but that was just a choice that he made to intimidate his son at yes. every possible opportunity. That was one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Um, another one, the scene where all of the wives are taking a group shot Mm -hmm. And they're waiting for one who's who comes later. And of course, when she shows up, she's way outdressed to the mall. She's got the the white flowery dress, and she looks just like a, a model straight out of you know a magazine. Um, right. That and must have been a fun. It was, well, and she's the only bottle blonde in the. Um, there's a wonderful line: "Only her hairdresser knows for sure," which is the Clairol tagline <laughs> of that era. Um, I bought every white and rose print dress I could find as it as I came across it, not knowing the size of the actress. Um, and I swatched fabric to make it, but we were lucky enough to, of the six that we had ready to go, to have one that fit her with some alterations fairly perfectly. And then we did all, we did create um, the one, one of the dresses for, um, Annie Glenn, because there used there was, I don't know, um, this coming up in an upcoming episode, um, which I haven't seen. But there was a scene where she purchases that dress as a story point, and we need to have it on a mannequin and stuff. Um, but the rest we found, it, because historically those dresses were a shirtwaist dress is so 1961, and the um, those colors are of the palette and life magazine was so unimaginative and wanted them to look like housewives that i came across 12 of those dresses in each color because it was mm. such a standard thing to do not unlike the guys in white shirts they were not allowed to be really imaginative or eccentric with the exception of um one it was very consistently we dressed her as kind of the outsider. Mm -hmm. um, this project is so incredibly timely because the, the SpaceX pro, uh, mm -hmm. program, they sent up uh, astronauts into space just this week and I was watching the right stuff and, and that was going on in the background. And I was just wondering, did you pay attention to what the real astronauts were wearing in November, 2020 and compare them to what you had done in, in, for the 60s? Yeah, it's really done the SpaceX with, and I think a, a fashion designer was on hand to help, um, was really done with an effort to make them look stylish. Um, the NASA program did that in their own way by choosing to make them in silver, which was in the 50s when you look at kind of mid-century sci-fi, that was something that was embraced as a way that made things look modern and, and 
chrome and all those fenders and all of that mid-century design, which is why they chose silver for it. There's a funny story. They didn't have enough boots made at one point for the big picture of all of them. So they actually, and I think my, my friends in the panel will appreciate this, they actually spray painted work boots to make them look like space boots for, for the photo. Mm -hmm. And just the idea of like NASA grunts out there spray painting boots in the parking lot is not unlike what we have to do all the time. But well, the uniforms are very impressive. Yeah. Well, Hope, thank you so much for chatting with us today. And we will see you in the big panel coming up next or soon. <laughs> Look forward to it.